Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Software Engineer K here, and today we've got some pretty awesome stuff to go through. Uh, we're going to be looking at what's been uh, kind of happening in terms of the VV marketplace, uh, specifically in terms of you know what's been driving the movement of prices. Uh, we're going to be linking that to the overall NFT market as a whole. Uh, specifically, I just want to analyze a couple of the niches within the NFT market, so the gaming and collectible niche. Um, and I'll just show you guys that on nonfungible.com. Um, and then linking that, we know that David, you at the NFT summit, he was talking about how NFT um, valuations can be increased based off of if a celebrity has held um, one of the NFTs that um, you know someone may be purchasing. So um, I just wanted to kind of link that to one of Al uh, Alfred Kahn's brands um, and just kind of you know expand a little bit on that kind of, uh, celebrity slash famous person following as well. Um, so firstly, what I want to do is just jump straight into um, Twitter. So I've got this um, image I posted today. So the Ultra Rare Dragon Girl, um, back when it first dropped, it was going for about, you know, 600, 700 gems on the very low end. You know, you could get it for about 800 on the mid end. And now it's pretty much doubled. Now you, it, the cheapest one is 1,600 gems. And that just goes to show you that the floor price for NFTs um, on VV, not just, you know, the Golden Dragon Girl, not just Ritmo, which I've been trying to get, but across the board, they've all been rising very consistently um, the past few days. And I think that's, you know, showing us that there are more collectors entering the space. There are more people who are serious about VV that, you know, really want to buy these entering the space because there has been, you know, news and advertisements and whatnot going around. There has been more awareness raised of VV. And it's not just, you know, the VV people that are raising awareness. It's just people within the VV community. I'm, you know, I share posts, for example, my uh, Supergirl NFT. I shared it in a Superman collectibles group and there were people really liked it as well. Um, same with the Batman. So, you know, it's this kind of community activism that's really raising awareness of VV and is bringing in a lot of these hardcore serious collectors and I've noticed that um, there was you know I'm trying to get a Ritmo um, and there's this guy and he only joined VV um, you know barely six weeks ago and this guy is insane like he's been buying everything um, he's bought up all the golden dragon girls he's bought up all the Ritmos so you can see I'm kind of in a bidding war with him for Ritmo um, I am losing but you know um, I may just end up buying Omi instead of um, Ritmo and then hopefully if Omi's price goes up and I could buy Ritmo later but um, yeah the price across the board has been going up massively um, I think you know some of the ones that are expecting price rises are you know Corsica because that has quite a low uh, number of editions as well and is series one Mermicorno series one uh, season one as well and you know if Ritmo has gone up this much I'm pretty sure Corsica will follow um, just because it's kind of like part of the same brand as well and yeah I think where we're heading right now is pretty good because I made a video about a month ago where I described that Buying VV NFTs um, is a very, very good way to diversify because we know that the crypto space, we know that stocks, we know that you know most assets they are you know primarily driven by institutional investors. Therefore, they are subject to market manipulation. Um, you know, you get the exact same kind of massive hedge funds that are sat there buying you know certain stocks, uh, you know certain cryptos, but you won't get someone like you know Renaissance Capital sat there on Wall Street buying you know Riso Batmans or Ritmos. Um, it is driven by collectors. So as a result, whatever's happening with institutional investors affecting you know the stocks or crypto market, that's not going to be reflected in the NFT market. And that's why we saw that even though, you know, crypto, Bitcoin went down, Omi went down, you know, tech stocks have been going down, Ritmos and Greg Gold and Dragon Girls, they have, you know, more than doubled in value in the past month. So I think, you know, that just confirmed my hypothesis to myself where I will continue to not just buy Omi, but also buy valuable VV collectibles, not just because I like collecting them because, you know, I, I do like completing my sets, but for a long term hold of these collectibles it is a great way to diversify. Um, so on that point, what I did also want to touch on is we know that the NFT market space, it has grown by 2,100% in the first quarter of 2021. And we see that growth. And I think because of that growth, we had a huge surge in users of Vivi and obviously they weren't ready for that. That's kind of been a good thing as well. Um, okay, yeah, we had problems with the app because they weren't ready to handle the users. They had to take away, you know, certain features, but it's kind of forced them to really accelerate their production and really accelerate their innovation as well. Like, you know, they've gone, they're they already moving quite fast, but now they've just gone, you know, 
super flash speed fast. Um, there is literally, you know, so many things they've delivered. And yes, there are certain things that they have done, you know, not so well. But given just how much they've had to do, like, I think that, is, you know, I can give them a pass because they've delivered so much in such a short amount of time. Um, Watch the interview I did with Trevor where he just talks about how much effort goes into just making one single NFT. Um, and it will be, and, you know, it, when you think about it in, that t- in those terms, it's just like, you know, how are they managing to deliver so much in such a short time? You know, they're doing the new features. They're fixing bugs actively as well. You know, they're managing all of these exploits that people are taking advantage of. It is really, really, you know, fascinating to see this happening. So on that point, what I did also want to touch on is so the overall NFT market space, if you go on non-fungible and if you look at the sales in USD, so across the past year, um, you know, typically NFT sales were pretty much uh, unknown up until very uh, like late January. That's when it popped off. Um, you know, we started seeing top shots. We started seeing, you know, all these other kind of brands as well. VV as well um, started gaining traction. And then we saw again, like another spike in February and then a very, very huge spike when Omi was kind of around its peak around about mid-March, late March. And we just randomly saw a huge spike um, last month as well. And then now we're back at this kind of level where, you know, we, we're still we still got decent volume. Uh, bear in mind that VV isn't included in this statistic, but we've got some big ones like Decentraland, CryptoKitties, CryptoPunk. So we can use that as a benchmark. Um, you know, the volume overall is still about, you know, five times higher than what it was um, right at the start of the year. So, you know, 500% growth, um, even though it's not as high as it was earlier, like you, you can't fault that. Um, and on that point, um, if you look specifically at the collectible niche, now, um, if we have a look here, the collectible niche did have very, very high volume. Um, you know, we saw approaching two, uh, $170 million per day there. And then now we've come back down to about, you know, $10 million a day, um, which is still, you know, pretty good for a relatively new market space, um, is growing and it's growing very, very fast. Um, and that's the kind of niche that VV is in collectibles. But if we have a look at the gaming niche, and this is really, really cool, because the gaming niche is where VV is looking to expand, specifically with the VV verse. So sales in USD. If we have a look at the one-year chart now, um, the market volume of daily sales is much, much lower here. You know, we're trading at below a million dollars um, in February per day, which is very, very low. You know, your Omi does more than a million dollars on a single, you know, five-minute candle. So. We did have a similar spike um, around about April. Um, the gaming niche didn't have that same kind of spike that we saw in early May. So that tells me that there was something to do with collectibles, not with gaming, that pushed that volume. Um, and we did see some new brands come out um, that were advertising collectibles. Um, I forgot what it was. I think it was the uh, baseball one. Um, and then, you know, Top Shots, as always, they had like their kind of legendary pack drops as well. Um, and I, f- I don't know, maybe CryptoKitties did something. I don't really follow them that much. but. Um, we didn't see that same spike in May in the gaming collect- NFT niche as we did in the collectible NFT niche. But if we have a look at the volume that we're having now, we're still at below a million. And that is actually interesting because VV is looking to expand into this market. And this shows me that it's a relatively untapped market. The volume daily is very, very low. So as soon as VV comes in, they're going to capture a huge, huge amount of this market share. They are literally going to be first to market. I mean, I know we've got Gods Unchained and a few others, but um, they probably account for most of this volume here. So I think VV um, has made a very, very good smart business decision by targeting the gaming niche. So I am personally looking forward to that, along with everything that's going to come with the VV-verse. Um, now, what I did also want to touch on is on Kitasius. So this is one of Alfred Kahn's, uh, well, this is Alfred Kahn's company. Um, he's got a brand here called Lee Cross. And, you know, personally, I wasn't very aware of it. I didn't really care too much about it. But there are people who really love this stuff. Um, and that just made me, you know, start to think about this from a much more open-minded point of view. And I just wanted to highlight this because I have shared this before, but um, if you know, demand for her product is so great in South Korea that the prime minister has become a personal collector. And these do look cool, um, but I personally didn't know much about it. Um, If Vivi does release it, I probably will still get it because this dragon thing does look cool. But 
you know, if the prime minister of South Korea is a personal collector, I imagine that not only is that going to drive volume just because of the awareness it will raise, but imagine having a collectible that was owned by the prime minister of South Korea or, you know, any big uh, famous politician, especially if you live in that country, it is going to add value. Uh, same with celebrities. We have loads of kind of YouTube influencers that are considered celebrities by people. And if they have owned a NFT, that's going to add value, um, you know, it is just a really, really cool, really new market that Vivi is leveraging off of. And all of this is going to drive Omi burn. And that takes me back to the point of Omi, where I have said before, it is very, very difficult to accurately predict the price of Omi just because, you know, we don't have the information about, you know, what is the Vivi verse going to do? You know, how much Omi are we going to uh, start burning in terms of the rate? Are they going to increase the burn rate for certain events, which, you know, they've alluded to doing? Um, same with, you know, moving to a new blockchain for Omi. Um, they have alluded that they're going to burn some tokens as they move because it is a very good opportunity for them to burn tokens. So all of this stuff does add together. And that's just something that I, you know, I, I want to raise awareness of as well. Um, and on that point of OMI prices, um, what I did also want to touch on is the daily price of OMI. So um, OMI was trading sideways for a while, you know, um, for the past, uh, you know, week or so, it was just um, trading in this range of 0.25 cents. And now it has moved up. And what caused it to go up? Well, nothing specifically, um, nothing OMI rate aid, nothing Ecom or VV related caused it to go up simply because the whole market moved up by about 7% today and OMI just followed. So again, OMI hasn't done anything miraculous today. It is trading one to one with Bitcoin still. But I think if we go in the four hour chart, um, we are still quite a bit away from, you know, where we were back in uh, early April. Um, was this? Oh, well, late April, we were, you know, 0.7 cents. And from there, we just had a continuous downtrend. I think now we may start to look at breaking out this downtrend because we have a lot of, you know, good things coming up to look forward to. We know that there were technical difficulties with the new exchanges, um, but those will, you know, be resolved it's not a case of if they will be resolved it's just when because um you know integrating go chain tokens when you don't have the capacity to um support go chain you have to put in all the extra work it is something that they have to you know put time and effort into doing and it's not something that i doubt it's something they'll get right first time so um i think that what we're gonna be having is again um once we have the new exchanges, once we start to get more users from, you know, the Comic-Con that's coming up, once we were Roger and Cohen starts advertising properly and that onboarding process, I believe, is five months. Uh, they, that was a month ago. So I believe in four more months, um, probably towards eight, uh, probably towards October, November time. That's when we're going to start to see the real power of Roger and Cohen. And, you know, um, in an interview, Reese did predict um, we're looking at a million users towards the end of the year. And I think that's going to be heavily driven by, you know, these big events that they're going to, as well as, you know, something big that Roger and Cohen is going to be working on for, you know, the uh, later half of this year. So I am personally very positive. I'm looking forward to what's going to happen. But, you know, I think anyone who's holding Omi, um, you've gotten in at a very good point now if you're buying now. Um, I am personally saying some buys for this week. I'm hoping the price doesn't shoot up just because I want to get in as low as possible. Um, but, yeah, I will continue to dollar cost average as time moves on anyway. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything I want to go through with you guys today. Um, as always, please do like and subscribe to support the content. And I'll keep you guys updated with anything else I find out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.